Good morning everybody. I hope everybody's having a good time. I am just reaching out to you for another video. And this video is about one thing that we have in, in, in most IT labs or home labs or your home server builds and so on is that you have a need to do diagnostics, right? So I was going to show you what I do to cheat and get around some of the obstacles you have when you need to deal with things such as, in this case, uh, specific make model cloning of hard drives uh, in a burn bench style, tech bench style setup as you can see here. So what this basically is addressing is pretty simple. When we work in our home labs, we have to work on stuff, right? And when we have to work on stuff, we need platforms, tables, chests, stuff like that, tools, and so on. And I've been talking to a variety of different tools and things. But what about how do you deal with operating environments, special needs like what we're doing right here in cloning? Uh, I have another piece of hardware and I need to diagnose it and so on and so on. Well, this is the way you can do that. So we'll start here in just a second as I bring over one piece of hardware and we'll begin. Okay, so... What do I do and how did I do it so that I could be able to take a piece of hardware, whatever it is, CD-ROM drive, I.O. card, whatever, pull it out, put it in another system, diagnose it with an oper operating system and try to troubleshoot it and so on and so on. Well, I do it with this. So the first thing I did is you can go out and buy yourself a $100 TechBench platform like this, but this is not like that. Actually, this is a mining rig frame I got for 20 bucks and you know again you could go and get yourself a tech bench which is basically similar to this sometimes they're at an angle aspects and so on I'll put a link in this video to show you what a tech bench looks like but I chose to do it on the cheap end but yet very flexible so in here you can see that I secured the faceplate for the motherboard just so I don't lose it and you notice here I have these little spacers. Yep, those are spacers you use underneath motherboards to affix them to your PC towers, but I'm using them to raise up and down, and then I place a screw into them, as you can see right there, and by doing that, I can raise the motherboard up a little higher because I've got better clearance, and that's where these support brackets come in, and by doing that, I've got a motherboard that's free and clear out in the open, easy to work with, with a 1200 watt power supply for any type of special need I need and connectivity for power. I have my side switch which I manually placed and it's down in the cabling and onto the motherboard. And in this case we're looking at a motherboard that if you look at it has PCI as well as PCIe. So I can do both the performance level and troubleshoot PCI cards, as you can see here. Uh, there are two slots there. And uh, you wonder, you say, what do you mean PCI? Why do you have PCI? Well, because a lot of my friends bring, um, shall we say, old stuff to the equation, like this PCI slot here. Uh, and other times I have, you know, PCIe right here, as you can see. It's a totally different connection point for this IO Drive Type 2 80 gig Fusion uh, boot device. And the key thing is, this motherboard is older. It's an Asus motherboard. It has the standard USB and the Intra 3.0 standard, so you can deal with compatibility issues that do occur with the 3.1. Uh, you have your extendeds and you have share busing, which can allow you to simulate some of the older style setups. But I got a decent processor and it's well cooled. But that's not my only problem. You see. Sometimes my compatibility is going to drive me to do one other key detail here, and that is the following. Okay, so I have to have more than one motherboard. That's right. So if you look here, here's another much newer 390 series uh, architect. A, a, um, this is a Tomahawk, if you want to look there. And right now I have its boot drive, which is server 2019, the PCIe only standing motherboard. And also, if we turn it here, which I'll do here, you will notice 
that on the back you have much more newer standardized ports and interfaces, eSATA and so on. And that means this, that this motherboard is a much more modern style motherboard. But life isn't easy. You always get new stuff and you also get old stuff. So yeah. <coughs> what I have to do here is I have to, by using my simple... <coughs> my simple extensions here um, I unconnect them break away all the power interface slide the motherboard out put the Arctic in instead sorry about that I had uh, had to stop and call for a second and by removing this motherboard out having the Arctic motherboard in I can change my format devices so that I can deal with more modernized style devices so the cool thing about all of this is that $20 rack, spare parts and pieces, which I just reused differently, as you can see there, um, open design, I've got extra support on the top for 20 bucks. The only real investment I did for this entire kit, because I took all the cabling feed and switching off of an old tower, is the power supply. Now, do you need a 1200 watt power supply? No, uh, you don't. But when I do dual, uh, dual video cards, I want to have the option to be able to do it. And so that's why I spent the only real money on this power supply, which is a very good power supply at this point stage that I enjoy. Though uh, this model is not available anymore. <clears throat> they have upgraded it to the 1500. But I would say 1000 watts to 1200 is good for baseline diagnostics. You want it easy. You want it out of the way. Don't be afraid to drill into it. You know, add some extra holes. Uh, that works. At, that actually works really well for what you're trying to accomplish, as you can see here. Um, and then you can really take advantage of uh, just t testing all types of old hardware uh, by using something like this, especially when you're doing bulk testing and hard drives. Big, big, big value because back here I could have all the maximum drives that the motherboard can handle, which is up to eight in most cases. And I can all let them diagnose and go through diagnostics and do whatever they got to do. Uh, and at the end of the day, when I come back, it's done. And you're talking about a lot of hard drives. <laughs> so I hope this was something that you guys enjoyed. Um, the PC Diagnostic Bench is a really great idea in regards to working with everything from cloning to the platform testing to handling uh, strange hardware you, you know you've got this machine off to the side you can put the hardware in it you can test it it's an old motherboard you probably paid ten dollars for it twenty dollars max um, you know and it comes up it works or it doesn't and it might damage a port but that's okay those are small items you can replace easily uh, not so much when you put it into a chassis of a server and pfft, you fried it don't ever do that you should always pre-test your equipment uh, especially if it's used equipment, just to make sure that it comes up and it works correctly in, the, in an operating system and you can accomplish what you want to do. All right, that's it for now. Uh, God bless. If you guys like, please like, and I'll let you go. Bye.